It's early fall here in Nova Scotia and this is one of the nicest times of year to be in the woods. It's also when apples are growing or are ready for picking. So a family tradition we've had for a long time is to take our children to the Annapolis Valley and go to one of the you pick orchards and pick bags of apples. So we, we do that every year and we, we come home with a, very, a couple of varieties of apples. But the thing is, is you can only make so many apple pies. You can only make so much applesauce. You can only freeze so many apples for later and you can only eat so many apples before you're we've had enough for that time period what do you do with the apples that you're not likely to consume before they go bad well what i like to do is dehydrate them so i have one of those old school uh, apple coring devices that you spiral the apple and it takes the core out and gives you a, a spiral of apple i cut them as nice even sizes i lay them out of my dehydrator i have them in i put them in a little bit of water that has either seven up or some citric acid or even a little bit of lemon juice that all works to keep them from going brown dry them and then i put them in uh, uh, the uh, bags, you know, what, the, what, are the, what do they call the uh, uh, food saver bags, right, and then I vacuum seal them for later use. Well, you know, one of the things that we like to do with fresh apples at home is to make apple crisp. It's just a wonderful early fall dessert, and there are a lot of good recipes for apple crisp, and you, yes, you could make apple crisp in the woods from fresh apples, but I thought, I wondered if I could make a very simple easy to make recipe that would use up some of my dehydrated apples. So I've come up with something that I want to share with you today. If you're interested in seeing a lightweight dehydrated apple crisp being made, keep watching. Okay, while well, this recipe and this pr method of making apple crisp is uh, easy, it's not really, really quick. It's certainly quicker and easier than it would be if I was making it from fresh produce. So what I need to start with, of course, is my de dehydrated apples. Now we like making our apple crisp with apples, of course, and with cranberries. So what I did is I took a handful of my dehydrated apples and a handful of cranberries and I put them in a Ziploc, but not a Ziploc bag, but a vacuum seal bag and sealed them up. And I did this some time ago. So they've been in there all excluded from the air, but it makes a perfect pouch for bringing out just the right amount for making into it. Now the other ingredient I'm going to be using is instant oatmeal and the one I chose is a no-name brand of maple and brown sugar. Now there is another little trick that I have to use another ingredient I'll add to this shortly which is vegetable oil. In this case I'm going to be using the highly processed uh, olive oil and the reason is is uh, it has the least amount of flavor that will impact. Ideally I would be using butter or margarine and cutting into this oatmeal but what's nice about these small packages is they are just the right amount they have just the right sugar all they need is some butter or oil or something mixed in to make a topping and you'll see that as I prepare it and go along so to get this process started I need a pot now I've done you can do this with a number of pots I'm sure you can do this with it well actually I did do it with a canteen cup uh, one time just to see if it would work but you know this is something I carry a lot which is my 12 centimeter zebra I would think anything larger in diameter than this it's going to be a little bit challenging something smaller will certainly work one of the things that I'm going to be doing in order to kind of bake this is using the lid to hold some hot coals and I'll be putting it on top and some hot coals on top to see if we can't crisp up the top of the apple crisp when we get to that point. But to start, what I need to do is get these into the water. It takes a little bit of time to rehydrate these and soften them up. You really, I mean, yes, I guess I could have put them in the water a while ago and let them soften up in some cold water, but uh, uh, breaking them up, getting them all inside, put them all in the cranberries apples all in together and you know I guess I could have done this portion of it on an alcohol stove but I have a little fire going well you'll see it in a second I'm using uh, my my two Simple Theory pack stoves because I'm doing a review on those but what I've done is I've just put them in maybe three quarters of a cup of water. Um, the exact amount of water isn't necessary for this recipe. The, the idea is you got to keep an eye on them. It should be a slow simmer for as long as it takes until the water is all absorbed and they look puffy and soft enough before going on to the next step. So there is sitting in the water. I'll get this on to a boil 
really you want to simmer it. Watch that you don't boil it too hot because you don't want them sticking to the bottom of the pot. All right, so once they are softened up, I'll bring it back and show you what they look like and we'll go on to the next step. All right, just checking on my apple cranberry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, okay. They can go another minute. They're nice and soft and pretty much ready to go on to the next step, but we have to get the topping to get ready before we do. So, package of instant oatmeal. This, like I mentioned, this is the maple and brown sugar. Now, I know I didn't give you a whole lot of uh, amounts in terms of ingredients. Some of this comes by experience, but I will give you what I use today in terms of the weight of the dehydrated apples and cranberries together for this. It looks to be just perfect right now. So it's a little bit of an experiential thing. So what I'm using is, this is olive oil, but it is a uh, processed olive oil, so there's not a lot of strong flavors in it. And that's important because you don't want to introduce flavors that you're not going to enjoy. Butter, margarine would have been better. But oil is something that I use for cooking when I'm out. I'm not putting in a whole lot, but I just want to mix it up. Now the idea is to mix it so that it's all the oatmeal is mixed together and held together. Not held together, it's like a loose crumble, I guess. Don't add too much oil too quickly and don't spill it like I just did. I think I'm going to need just a little bit more oil. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'll show it to you. Now, it would look a little bit different if I was using margarine or butter because, of course, they would hold it together a little bit better than the oil. But it tastes great with oil. Okay. Can you see what I've got here? It's, it's kind of a crumbly... Well, that's what it is. A crumble of oatmeal and sugar, basically. Brown, brown maple syrup. Brown sugar and maple syrup, I guess, is the flavors here. You know, you can add whatever other flavors you want. A lot of people like cinnamon added to this, but uh, this is just the package I had at home. Now, where's my gloves? Here we go. I want to be able to show you what the apples look like at this point before I add the, uh, the crumble on top. So you get an idea just how far down I've simmered them. Now you can see, hopefully you can see what I've got in there. The apples have all rehydrated along with all the cranberries. And you can see the red from the cranberries mixing through with the apples. The smell is simply amazing right now. Uh, let me tell you, it is simply amazing. So, there's just a little bit of water left in it. None of it stuck to the bottom. What I'm going to do, need something to lay this on, is put my crumble on top by spoonfuls. I'm just kind of shaking it around so that it covers the entire surface of the apples. All right. And now we're ready to go to the next step. Now the next step, step is baking on a fire. Now how am I going to bake on top of a fire? Well, that's what I'm going to show you next. So let me reposition the camera and I'll show you how we're going to do this. All right, in full disclosure, uh, my original intent was to use wood for both cooking the apples as well as baking with. Uh, what I found is, is I'm using the t uh, two, I have two, yes, I have two of the pack stoves from Simple Theory Gear and I just was doing a review today so I thought I would use these to do this on as well. But uh, they're so efficient in terms of wood that they, they go through the wood fairly quickly and unless you're watching like a hawk, uh, you don't get left with much of a coal base. And that's what it really I wanted to use for this was a coal base that I could just draw out some coals of hot wood to put on top of the lid of the zebra pot. Well, it was going through a little bit too quickly. Now there's still a little bit of wood burning inside. Fortunately, I had a couple of pieces of charcoal. Now, this is charcoal briquettes that I had brought along for another test and demonstration of a pot, but it will produce just enough heat and will do just fine. If you've got an open fire, 
uh, it would be a lot easier than trying to use a small stove like this. I just want to show you could use a small stove like this to do it and that I could have had a good fire going with a lot of hardwood coals in the bottom pushed some of the coals aside to put my pot in, grabbed a few of the coals and put on top of the pot lid and it would have baked the heat in the ground, would have kept it heated from below and of course the heat on top from the, the hardwood coals would have crisped the top. I haven't done it this way before so it's going to be a bit of a challenge to see if it works out. So in this little pack stove I've got three charcoal briquettes fairly well engaged and I'm going to put that on top and in this one, there's still a little bit of active flame with some of the wood that had been in there. But there's a couple of charcoal briquettes there as well that look to be fairly well engaged. And I'm just going to put them right on top of the lid. Now, you know, you do have to have a pot you can do this with. And there's a number of pots out there. I like using the Zebra Billy can. And yes, I know uh, Steve from the Firebox Stove has a nice baking setup that you could probably do this with even better but uh, you know this is kind of a simplified version of what I wanted to use now there's a few hardwood coals I could probably add on top as well well I can hear the everything cook or uh, that's the only problem I'm a little worried right now in doing this that there is so much heat in the bottom from the the charcoal briquettes that are in there because they do produce a lot of heat I can hear the apples and the cranberries bubbling down in there and I didn't want too much heat I think I'm going to have to remove a briquette from there add it to the top so I don't get too much heat on the bottom so at this point I want to leave it for a full 15 minutes to bake so yeah I do have to watch the heat so I don't get too much heat otherwise it'll be stuck to the bottom and that would not be good so I think I'll even do that while the camera's still rolling see if I can't reach in I can always add more heat there, I've got three on top. And they are still bubbling inside of that pot, I can hear. Okay, it's going to take me 15 minutes to complete the process of making the apple crisp in my zebra billy pot. But once it's done, I'll bring it back and we'll show you the results. All right, I probably let this go, yeah, I think, every bit of 20 minutes. So, it. Uh, well, I guess we're about to see how it turned out. I ended up, I won't be, well, I might be able to show you this. I'll have to use gloves, though. I ended up taking all but one of the briquettes of charcoal and out of the bottom of the, the stove and putting four briquettes on top. And I, let me tell you, there's a lot of heat. Even so, I don't know. There's a lot of depth to this pot. Oh, that is getting hot. I got to get that lid off. There's a lot of depth before, you know, between the top of the pot lid or the pot lid and, the, and where the dessert is inside. I am using a pair. Ooh. I don't know. Looks pretty good. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I'm standing here looking at it when I should be showing it to you. Can you see what it looks like inside the pot? I'm going to put it in a bowl and then we'll do a taste test with it. But it turned out pretty good. So how am I going to manage this? Okay. Oh yeah. Nothing stuck to the bottom. Apples and cranberries are fully cooked. The oatmeal, maybe it could have been a little... No, I, I think I would have preferred it a little crisper. Uh, it is a little crisp on top, so the, some of the heat did reach down to where the oatmeal was. What it looks like is not everything. What it tastes like is what it's all about. So, there's my apple crisp. I'm going to reposition the camera and we'll give it a taste test. Okay, you know I said a minute ago what it looks like is nothing, what it tastes like is everything. That's not entirely true. You want your meal. There is something to be said about how a meal presents in terms of what, how, it, how you feel about it. This looks great. Smells great. But the real test is in what does it taste like. Okay, let me get some on a spoon so I can show you. Look at the steam coming off of that. Apples, cranberries, oatmeal. A little crisp. Could have been crisper, but a little crisp. Hmm. Ooh, hot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm okay with it not being crisper on top like you might like it when it comes out of the oven because the oatmeal cooked up properly. 
That oil actually tastes like butter. Mm. That's a good sized dessert too. Oh yeah, gonna, gonna give you another look at that. Apple crisp, made from dehydrated apples, dehydrated cranberries, and a package of instant oatmeal, brown sugar and maple flavor. Oop, dropped a little bit on the ground. Can't have that. <laughs> Am I a happy man? Absolutely. That turned out just fantastic. I mean, I have done it before. I just didn't do it in my billy can because it's not the first pot I would have chosen to do it. I was considering bringing out my Camel 1.2 liter pot. Same diameter, so it would have worked in terms of the, the amount of ingredients, but it has a recessed lid, which would have been great for holding the hot coals on top of and brought them down a little closer to the oatmeal on top and maybe crisp it up a little bit. I'd be interested in knowing if you have tried something like this in the woods using dehydrated apples and cranberries or what recipe you would use if you were doing this. Would you do it any different? How would you modify it from uh, the way I'm... i got to have another bite, sorry. Mm. Would you modify it? Uh, let me know in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, until next time, get out and explore. Take along something like this to try because, boy, it just caps off my day. But get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.